I call the recess meeting of May 24th, 27 um, to order. Roll call. Barron. Present. Borelli. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Here. Carnegie. Crowley. Combo. Deutsch. Here. Drum. Here. Espinal. Eugene. Ferreris Copeland. Borelli. Garodnik. Here. Gentili. Here. Gibson. Here. Greenfield. Gradenchik. Here. Johnson. Kalos. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Mizell. Here. Mealy. Menchaca. Presente. Mendez. Here. Miller. Present. Palma. Here. Perkins. Here. Reynoso. Richards. Present. Rodriguez. Here. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Here. Vaca. Here. Malone. Here. Williams. Here. Wills. Here. Matteo. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Speaker Mark Viverito. I adjourn the recess meeting of May 26th, which was held on June 6th. We are now in the stated meeting for June 6th. All rise. Barron. Present. Borelli. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Here. Carnegie. Crowley. Combo. Here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Deutsch. Here. Drum. Here. Espinal. Eugene. Here. Ferreris Copeland. Garodnik. Here. Gentili. Here. Gibson. Shh. Greenfield. Gradenchik. Here. Johnson. Kalos. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Mizell. Here. Mealy. Menchaca. Presente. Mendez. Miller. Present. Palma. Here. Perkins. Here. Reynoso. Richards. Here. Rodriguez. Here. 
Johnson. Here. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Here. Torres. Traeger. Here. Here. Ulrich. Here. Vaca. Vaca. Thank you. Thank you. Valone. Williams. Wills. Here. Matteo. Van Bramer. Here. Speaker Mark Viverito. Thank you. All quiet in the chambers, please. Quiet in the chambers. All rise for the invocation that will be delivered by Reverend Council Member Cabrera. <laughs> Let's bow our heads. Father, we come before you acknowledging your supreme and glorious authority over all. And before we pray for the agenda before us, Father, we pray for that five-year-old little boy that is in the hospital right now from Council Member Gibson's district. We pray for a miracle, and we pray for a speedy recovery. Father, we come in this most important day in the City Council as we present this budget in response to the needs of the most vulnerable New Yorkers, low-income, at-risk youth, immigrants, veterans, small business owners, and others. We will continue to address the issues of poverty and discrimination while ensuring continuation of every day, day-to-day -day operation, preservation of infrastructure and essential services. I ask you for a blessing upon our speaker, public advocate, and my colleagues in the City Council who work so hard and are devoted to better serve this city and whom you have targeted with your love. Alas, we pray for a special blessing upon all the staff who spend countless hours towards making sure we have the earliest budget ready in 20 years. This we pray in the mighty, majestic, marvelous, and matchless name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We want to thank Council Member Fernando Cabrera for that prayer. Thank you. Adoption of minutes. None. Shh. Messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Preconsidered M515, discount rate. So go over that again, please. Preconsidered pre M515, discount rate. Finance. Preconsidered M516, transfer city funds. Finance. Preconsidered M517, appropriation of new revenues. Finance. Preconsidered M518, five year capital plan. Finance. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call ups? None. Quiet in the chambers, please. May we have quiet in the chambers. May we close the doors. Thank you. And now we hear from the speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. And I will say good afternoon. I'm going to start this to everyone. Thank you um, all for being here to adopt the final and extremely early budget of the 2014. 2017 session. I uh, really can't believe it, but we are at the end of this legislative session. Um, and I really want to sincerely thank all of you for the work that you've put into this budget season. From our committee chairs to our policy analysts and councils to those holding it down in our district offices, it has truly been a team effort. Um, of course, I want to give thanks to uh, Finance Committee Chair Julissa Ferreras Copeland, who was also uh, alongside me, marking her last budget season, and of, obviously the amazing staff in the Finance Department, led by Latanya McKinney. If we could ask all of the Finance staff to stand up, please. Yeah! <laughs> Latanya, come over here. Latanya, come on. <laughs> Yay, Latanya. I 
have been proud to, uh, to negotiate this budget with these two amazing women. Uh, <laughs> two very uh, strong-willed, opinionated Latinas. Yes. And our great Latanya and uh, leading an incredible division. Uh, really a historic moment for this city, and I, I think that that cannot be said enough. I also, um, obviously over the past nearly four years of serving as your speaker, I have been proud to sit at the table with all of you, my colleagues, mis colegas. Gracias for allowing me the privilege to represent you and this council. Together, we have affected change in the lives of millions of New Yorkers, people whose circumstances have been tangibly improved by the causes we have taken on and the results we have achieved. And while this is my last budget as a member of the council, I feel nothing but proud. Under the leadership of all those gathered here today, you, our staff, everyone, we have become the most open, the most transparent, and the most productive session of the New York City Council in history. I could not be more impressed by the initiatives shown by this group to serve and uplift New Yorkers throughout the five boroughs, no matter how vulnerable or while preparing for our city's future. Because of you, $85.2 billion will baseline 70,000 summer jobs for our city's young people. We'll grant our veterans financial relief through property tax exemptions. We'll improve our community senior centers. We'll outfit our FDNY teams with new boots just in time for tomorrow's medal day. And we'll enhance our reserves, ensuring that this great city can weather any storm. So again, thank you to all of you. You know, it is, um, it is an emotional time. I mean, we have obviously six more months of this legislative session, um, but this budget and negotiating it and knowing that it'll be the last time that I stand here uh, in this capacity, uh, really, I, I am proud of it, but I'm also really proud of the legacy that I personally will leave behind uh, as I move on to the next phase of my life. So again, I wanna thank you all for the confidence you've bestowed on me and the partnership in which we've worked together, I think all of us uh, really should be, uh, it should be known to all of us the impact we've had on this city and on the lives of so many New Yorkers. Before we begin, I also want to acknowledge a, you know, a couple of uh, people um, who've served our city. I want to obviously extend my thoughts and the thoughts of this council to NYPD Officer Daush Veve who is currently recovering from grievous injury in the line of duty at Kings County Hospital. Let's keep him in our thoughts. Um, please, I wanna thank Council Member Eugene uh, for his leadership, but also obviously um, to all the staff and doctors at Kings County Hospital that are keeping him uh, safe and hopefully uh, we'll see a recovery. And finally, I wanna thank Senior Project Manager of the Land Use Division, Peter Janicek, who's for 32 years of service to the City Council. Uh, is ending his term here. He retires this week after serving under five speakers and over 20 zoning subcommittee chairs. <laughs> and lastly, as, as um, thank Council Member Cabrera for his invocation, but again, to really uh, keep Officer Veve, but also that young five-year-old um, in our thoughts as we wish them uh, both a recovery. And with that, I would like to hand over um, the podium and the speaking time to Finance Chair Ferreras Copeland to hear more on, on budget, obviously also uh, her last budget negotiating it as uh, our Finance Chair, uh, Julissa. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. A few minutes ago, the Finance Committee voted to adopt the fiscal 2018's budget, which totals approximately $85.2 billion. And I just wanted to say that um, I thanked many of the Finance Committee members there, but I wanted to take this opportunity to acknowledge 
our fearless leader. First and foremost, I want to thank our speaker, Melissa Margverito. She's a wise Latina, a tireless advocate for the people of the city, and a fearless leader for the members of this council. Throughout the past four budget cycles, she has listened to concerns and priorities of each and every one of us and our constituents, and has approached budget negotiations with clear purpose to ensuring that the council's vision for this city is reflected in each budget, helping us to finally end the budget dance. Because of her leadership, more young people, more than ever, as she had mentioned, will be able to be employed through our summer and year-round jobs. More immigrants have access to education, health, and legal services. More police officers keep our city safe. More students have access to affordable, healthy meals. The, this year's budget delivers even more victories for New Yorkers, and I believe that the speaker can be proud of what she has delivered in her final budget and my final budget. I must also thank um, the speaker's chief of staff, Ramon Martinez, who is actually here, maybe not here, um, but Ramon, who has assisted us every step of the way um, on behalf of the institution. Thank you as well, and I know that it was mentioned already, but you know, you really can't acknowledge this amazing team enough. To the fellow um, uh, finance committee members for their partnership over the last three, year, three and a half years, and of course, I must express my enormous gratitude to our dedicated and ti ti talented finance staff led by the amazing Latanya McKinney. One of the things I'm most proud of about my tenure as finance chair is that the first time in history this council is represented by three women in the city's budget negotiating. Latanya, you have been a fantastic leader, negotiator, advocate, and friend. And we are all very, very proud that you have led us through this way. I also want to thank the staff and the finance division, in, uh, division individually. Each one of you has played an essential role in bringing us to today's budget adoption. And I thank you for the long hours you have worked on this budget. And many people don't know, but they were here through weekends. Um, and I think if we were to add up all the time in the last year, four years that we've been doing this, you probably have been here a total of about a year of, of just working nonstop. Uh, Deputy Director Chief and Dr. Uh, Chief Economist Dr. Ray Majeski, Deputy Director Regina Parita Ryan, Deputy Director Nathan Toth, Deputy Director Paul Simone, Assistant Director Emma Ediv, Finance Counsel Eric Bernstein, Supervising Economist Paul Strom, the Finance Unit Heads Isha Wright, Chimo Bicheri, John Russell, Dohini Sampura, Krillian Francisco, Jessica Ackerman, Alia Ali, Maria Nachi, Sarah Gastelum, Kenny Grace, Zachary Harris, Elizabeth Hoffman, Sheila Johnson, William uh, Kara Matang, Jin Lee, Prince Men Menza, Jeanette Merrill, Na Namira Nazat, Ka Caitlin O'Hagan, Jimmy Reyes, Steve Ressler, John Seltzer, Kendall Stephan Stephenson, Brandon West, and David Winslow. I'd also like to thank the support staff, Nicole, Robert, and Maria, and last but not least to uh, my incredible team, uh, my Chief of Staff Catalina Cruz, my Deputy Chief of Staff Ivan Acosta, and everyone else who's back at the district office. I also wanted to acknowledge, um, often we don't acknowledge them, but they do a lot of work with the Finance Division also, and that's the General Counsel's Office. So to Jason Otaño and uh, Chuck Davis, who runs around to make sure that we are legit and okay and not getting into any trouble with our disclosures. So thank you to the General Counsel team also. The budget that we present to the Council for Adoption today reflects a balance of meaningful investments in the people of our city with measures safeguarding these important programs and services for the future. I want to thank all of my colleagues for putting their trust in me during this budget process. This budget is a result of a collective, a collective effort with all of you. Thank you again to the BNT and to everyone who has a piece and a touch of this budget. I am very, very, very humbled by this experience and proud to stand and say that I was a member of this council to vote on these important budgets. Um, while it is my last one, I am not moving that far. Please take the Amtrak to visit me in Maryland. Um, and you know, this is one chapter of the Julissa book. There'll be many more. Gracias. All right. And, um,
Wow, very, uh, very touching. Um, you know, I also do want to, I, I want to, I mean, there's so many people to thank, and obviously we don't do this work alone, and so, uh, yes, I want to thank my staff as well. There's so many to name, but obviously uh, Ramon, Joe, Joey, and everyone else in the speaker's office, um, a lot, a lot of conversations with members, meeting with organizations, helping really finalize and whittle down what our priorities are, and again, a budget that we can, you know, all be proud of. And uh, with that, I end communication from the speaker. Thank you. <clears throat> Discussion of general orders for a vote. Council Member Palma. Madam Public Advocate, with permission, I'd like to vote on all couple items under the general calendar and resolutions. Yes, I vote aye. Thank you. For a vote, Council Member Drum. I'd also like to ask for permission to vote on all coupled items on the calendar. Yes. I vote aye. Thank you. Council Member Rose. Yes, I'd also like to um, vote on all couple general orders except for pre-considered Reso 1520, 1521, 1535, 519, and SLR 2 and 4. Thank you. Council Member Landsman. Madam Public Advocate, with yes. your permission, I would like to vote on all coupled general orders and resolutions. Yes. Disclosing that the Young Israel Pilcrest is funded in the budget we are adopting, and I am associated with this mem entity as a member. I vote aye. Thank you. Councilmember Rose, you wanted to make a disclosure? Yes. Um, I'd, I'd like to also disclose for the record that um, the New York City Department of Sanitation is funded by in this budget, and we are adopting, and my son is associated with this not for profit. Thank you. Councilmember Ulrich. Uh, Madam Public Advocate, I'd like to uh, vote on all matters on the general order calendar. Yes. Okay. Before I do vote, I'd like to disclose on the record of the Council proceedings that St. Francis College, my alma mater, is funded in the budget we are adopting today, and my spouse is the Assistant Director of Human Resources at this entity. And with that, I vote on aye. Uh, aye on all with the exception of SLRs 2 and 4 and preconsidered resolutions. Well, I'll do the preconsidered resolutions with the clerk. But those are 1520, 1521, 1537, and M519. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for an early vote? <laughs> Council Member King? With permission, I'd like to run off a couple out. items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. Yes. I vote aye. Also, I'd like to add for full disclosure, I'm closing on the record. Um, that 1199 National Benefit Education Fund is funded in the budget which you adopted, and my wife is associated with this entity. And I'd like to vote aye on all. Council, Council Member Vaca. I uh, thank you so much, and I first want to disclose that, uh, for the record, um, I am disclosing that I work at Queens College, which is funded in this budget that we are adopting. I vote aye on all except SLR2, which I vote no, and I vote no on Resos 1520, 1521, 1537, and M519. Thank, thank you. Council Member Salamanca. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I, I am disclosing on the record of the Council's proceedings that say, uh, number one, St. Vincent de Paul residence is funded in the budget we are adopting, and my father's associated with this entity, and that the New York City Parks and Recreation is funded in the budget that we are adopting, and my wife and uh, steps and are associated with this entity as well. And with permission, I would like to vote on all couple items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. Yes. I vote aye, thank you. Thank you. Council Member Wills. Madam Public Advocate, I'd like to vote on all general um, orders calendars. Yes. Uh, I vote aye on all except for resolution 1533, which I abstain. Thank you, any disclosures? You. No. Thank you. Council Member Barron. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. With permission, I'd like to vote on all general order cal calendar items and accompanying resolutions. Shh. Yes. I vote aye. Thank you. Any disclosures? No. Thank you. Uh, and now back to general order discussion, beginning with Council Member Van Bramer. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Madam Public Advocate. I wanted to rise to talk a little bit about the budget, but also to pay tribute to the speaker and the finance chair, particularly because as the chair of cultural affairs and libraries, uh, it's at a time like this where it's fitting to talk about uh, a legacy for both speaker Melissa Mark Viverito and finance chair Ferreris Copeland. Uh, in this year's budget alone, there's over $160 million in capital for cultural institutions, uh, over $132 million 
library capital dollars in this budget. In the four years that we have served and this council has been in session, uh, these four budgets alone have contributed nearly $700 million in cultural capital in the city of New York, over $500 million in library capital for the city of New York, and we have restored and baselined six-day library service. So as the speaker uh, and the finance chair continue to serve for another six years, uh, I also want to say that while other folks uh, who have previously served uh, have been known as cultural and library champions. Uh, it will be generations uh, uh, to come, generations of children and seniors and immigrants and everyday New Yorkers who will benefit from the wise choices and the leadership uh, that we've all benefited from uh, with our speaker and our finance chair uh, championing libraries and cultural institutions of the city of New York. This budget today is an enormous victory, perhaps the best ever for culture and the arts in the city of New York. But cumulatively, the four years that we've all served together have been remarkable, and I want to thank the speaker and the finance chair uh, for their leadership and for leaving a legacy that we can all be enormously proud of. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Council Member Chin. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Today, I'm going to be proud to cast my vote for a budget that is compassionate and responsible. This budget saves for an unpredictable future and take care of our vulnerable New Yorkers. And I'm proud particularly to proclaim this fiscal year as the year of the senior. This was a long time coming. After we passed the budget last year, I told Director Dean Fullerhan and the mayor that this year is going to be our year. So we did what we do best. We organized, we gathered the aging advocates like Live on New York, AARP, FPWA, and to ask them for their wish list. We worked together to rally and advocate, and we never gave up. Today, we vote on a budget that right-sized senior centers. It creates the city's first ever program to provide caregivers the support they deserve. It provides seniors with a weekend meal so that they do not have to go hungry. And it makes sure that no seniors will have to wait for case management or home care services. The $22.89 million in baseline funding is the most the Department of Aging has received in at least a decade. We fought, we advocate, and we succeeded. There are so many people to thank for this victory, but especially to our speaker and our finance chair, who created a culture of openness and fairness in the last four budget. The City Council will surely miss your leadership. I wanted to thank all the aging advocates and all the seniors who came to all the hearing and, and rally, and of course our finance staff, especially Dohini Sapura, Regina Ryan, and Latanya McKinney. You work around the clock, you prepare us for hearing, and you make sure our priorities are included in every discussion. And thank you to all the speakers, staff, and the finance chair staff, and also to my staff, especially Vincent, who helped me kick off and pull off the year of the senior from the beginning. And thank you to all my colleagues for your support. Thank you. Congratulations and congratulations, Bobby Sackman. Uh, Council Member Eugene, quiet in the chambers, please. Thank you very much, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, good afternoon. I'm pleased uh, to be voting on this budget today because it found all the essential programs we all rely on every single day, and because it does a great deal to support our youth and the health of our constituents. As chairman of the Youth Services Committee, I am proud of the investment that we are making in our city youth by increasing funding toward the programs that encourage employment. We are helping more of our young men and women enter the workforce and find opportunities to succeed. I would like to take the opportunity also to thank all my colleagues and the City Council for the support of youth and the SYEP program. And I would like also to thank Madam Speaker for her leadership and all her, her staff who work diligently to make sure that we pass the budget today. I also want to thank the administration for the effort in supporting the purchase of a new state-of-the-art dialysis machine for SUNY Downstate Medical Center in my district. The implementation of this equipment signifies an important step in the treatment we are able to provide
for those suffering from kidney disease. Far too often, the people that we are serving, they don't receive the proper treatment because of lack of resources. With uh, the addition of this uh, machine, we are demonstrating a profound commitment to the health and well-being of our community. We also giving hope to the family members of loved ones who are required dialysis for their treatment and also to survive. I commend the administration and the city council for understanding the importance of this uh, life-saving treatment. I'm proud that uh, we are able to work together to provide the funding for important programs and projects that save life and make our city great. Again, I would like to thank my colleagues in the city council and the administration for their support and making sure that our hospital receive the equipment they need to save life and our young people get to receive the opportunity they need to succeed. And also, I want to thank all of you who have been very supportive to the family of uh, Officer Veve, because as many of us, uh, he is an immigrant coming to the United States and to do everything that he can do to contribute to the greatness of uh, this city that where we are living. Thank you very much, and congratulations to all of you for this wonderful budget. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you, Council Member. We'll, we will keep Officer Veve in our thoughts and our prayers as well as the five-year-old child. Anyone else for general orders? Well, we're going to take a break now um, for a minute or two. Uh, we are awaiting the speaker. Okay. In the meantime, thank you, City Council, for funding Universal School Lunch. Thank you. Uh, um, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Anybody have a joke? St Anyone want to talk about what's happening in the district? Anyone have any programs they want to invite the general public to? Any news items? Any births, marriages, anniversaries? No, not yet? OK. You have a what? You have, you have a 5K? You want to tell everyone? <laughs> um, any, any, anyone? Madam public Here we advocate. Go. OK, we're back in order. Now we have the speaker. The speaker, we were just announcing programs and events in our respective districts, that's all. Back to the calendar. Report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Finance, pre-considered M516 and Reso 1529, on page three, expense budget. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered M517 and Reso 1530, appropriation of new revenues. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered M515, five-year capital plan. Wait, 518, no? Did you say 515? 518, sorry. Okay, yes, coupled on general orders. Pre-considered resolution 1531, five-year educational plan. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered reso 1520 and reso 1521, base percentage and adjusted base proportion. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered reso 1522, transparency resolution. Coupled on general orders. M498 and resos 1532 and 1533, Shh. expense budget. Coupled on general orders. M-499 and Resos 1534 and 1535, capital budget. Coupled on general orders. M-500 and Reso 1536, CD program. Coupled on general orders. M-506, 10-year capital strategy. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered M-519 and Reso 1537, fixing the tax rate. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered M-515, discount rate. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered Reso 1523 through pre-considered Reso 1525 property tax rates. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered Reso 1526 and Reso 1527 water and sewer rents. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered LU 674 and Reso 1538 through LU 676 and Reso 1540 various applications. Coupled on general orders. M467 through M505. Uh, on the next page, expense, contract, capital, and executive budget and supporting budget documents. Couple to be filed. Report of the committee on land use, LU 631 and Reso 1541 and LU 632 and Reso 1542 sidewalk cafes. Couple on general orders. LU 635, zoning amendment. Approve the modifications and refer to the City Planning Commission pursuant to rules 11.70B of the rules of the council and section 197D of the New York City Charter. L, excuse me, LU 643 and Reso 1543 and LU 644 and Reso 1544. 
Couple to be filed pursuant to letter of withdrawal. LU 647 and Reso 1545 and LU 648 and Reso 1546. And we have quiet in the chambers, Sidewalk please. Cafe. Couple, couple on general orders. LU 649 and 650. Uh, approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 656 and Reso 1547 through LU 671 and Reso 1557 on page 15, tax exemptions. Uh, you said through 15, Reso 1557, right? Yes, ma'am. Coupled on general orders. LU 673 and Reso 1558, UDAP Manhattan. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on State and Federal Legislation, preconsidered Reso 1519, mayoral control. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered SLR 1, investments by local governments. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered SLR 2, property transfer. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered SLR 3, retirement and social security law. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered SLR 4, city tax rates and taxes. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Youth Services, intro 709A, Youth Workforce Program. Amended and laid over. On the general order calendar, resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled on general orders, and I ask a roll call on all items coupled on the general order calendar. As members vote, may we please have some quiet. Please. Borelli. Thank you. Uh, I'm voting no on SLRs 2 and 4 and pre-consider Reso 1520, 1521, 1537, and M519. I on the rest, and I have to disclose um, that the College of Staten Island is funded in this budget, and I am associated with that entity. I teach there, uh, and my wife is a substitute this year. Hopefully she gets a job, if you know anybody, uh, at PS55R uh, on Staten Island. Congratulations. <laughs> Cabrera. Uh, yes, I am disclosing on the record on the council proceedings that Kiss Bay Boys and Girls Club is funding the budget we are adopting, and through my church, I am associated with this entity, and I vote I and all. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Public Guy. Chin. I'm disclosing on the record of the council proceeding that PS3 is funded in the budget we are adopting, and my husband is a teacher in the school, and I vote I on all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cohen. Uh, I'm disclosing that I really love our finance chair, and with that, I'm voting aye. Thank you so much. Constantinidis. Shh. I'm disclosing on the record of this council proceedings that the CUNY Law Foundation program in support of PS85Q was funded in the budget we are adopting, and that my child is a student at PS85Q, and that PS151 is funded in the budget we are adopting, and my wife is associated with this entity, and I vote aye on all, uh, everything on the calendar today. Thank you. Carnegie. I don't know, and um, I'm going to miss you, Jalissa. Any disclosures, council member? Nope. Thank you. <laughs> Crowley. Uh, can I have permission to explain my vote? Yes. I'd like to connect, commend our speaker, Melissa Mark Beverito, finance chair, Jalissa Ferreras Copeland, and my council colleagues for negotiating a budget that reflects the needs of everyday New Yorkers. With additional funds for seniors, tax exemptions for veterans, new boots for firefighters, more summer youth jobs, all while adding to the city's reserve funds, this budget will improve countless New Yorkers' lives, all while safeguarding them for the future. So thank you again to the speaker, and I am disclosing on the record for the council proceedings that the New York City Department of Education is funded in the budget we are adopting, and my sis and two of my sisters are teachers at the Department of Education. CUNY is funded in the budget we are adopting, and my son is a CUNY student, and the New York Public Library and Carnegie Hall are funded in the budget we are adopting, and my domestic partner is affiliated with these entities. And that uh, completes my disclosures. Thank you. Combo. Did I vote aye? You voted aye? No. She's asking if she voted. Oh. You want to pass? Or? Council Member Crowley. I was just waiting for Council Member okay. Crowley to finish. I apologize, uh, Council Member Cumbo. I think in my statement I forgot to vote aye. Oh. Yes. I Thank vote you. yes on the budget. <laughs> Council Member Cumbo. I am disclosing on the record of the Council proceedings that the New York City Department of Education is funded in the budget we are adopting 
and I have two sisters who are employed as teachers with the Department of Education, and I vote aye. Thank you. Deutsch. I'm disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that Ms. Sarah Spasiaco is funding the budget we're adapting, and my child is a student at the school, and that Kingsborough Community College is funded in the budget and we are, that we are adapting, and my children are students at this school, and that Brooklyn College is funded in the budget we are adapting, and my children will be students at this school. Thank you. <laughs> and I vote aye and all. Thank you. <laughs> Espinal. Uh, I'd like to disclose that CUNY is funded in the budget that we are adopting, and my brother is one and a half million students in the CUNY <laughs> school system. Um, <laughs> with that said, I'll vote aye. Thank you. <laughs> Eugene. Thank you. Any disclosures, council member? Okay. Ferreris Copeland. I proudly vote aye. Aw. Thank you. Garadnik. I vote aye, and I've got a bunch of disclosures, so bear okay. with me. Okay, shh. I'm disclosing on the record of Let's the council. Let's hear his disclosures, this everyone. This is going to be good, guys. All right. <laughs> <laughs> there seems never end here. Okay. Uh, Planned Parenthood of New York City is funded in the budget we're adopting. And my wife is not affiliated with that entity, but she is the Senior Associate General Counsel of Planned Parenthood Federation of America, which is the national organization. New York Roadrunners is funded in the budget we're adopting, and I am a card-carrying member of that entity. Yes, I saw you. The, thank you. Uh, Show the Stuyvesant Town Peter Cooper Village Tennis Association Foundation, Inc. is funded in the budget we're adopting, and I am a member of that association as a member of that community. The Peter Stuyvesant Little League is funded in the budget we're adopting, and my child is a slugger in t-ball uh, <laughs> in that entity. And Asphalt Green is funded in the budget we're adopting, and my child, same child, if it matters, uh, was a participant at this entity as an enthusiastic flag football player. And that Very. concludes my disclosures, and I vote aye still. Very athletic Thank child. <laughs> Gentilly. I have uh, one disclosure. Um, William McKinley IS-259 is funded in the budget that we are adopting and my sister is associated with this entity. I vote aye on all. I say bravo to Julissa. And uh, Julissa, you'll be joining me and the speaker and several others in the room learning about life after the council, right? Thank you. Vote aye. Congratulations. Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate, and I thank you, and I want to join all of my colleagues in expressing my sincere appreciation to the dynamic trio of women um, who have led this council, our speaker, our finance chair, and our budget director, and the entire finance division. Thank you so much for being continued advocates for every New Yorker. I am so grateful that this budget makes incredible investments in children and families and immigrants and seniors and veterans, more slots for summer youth, which are sorely needed, particularly in our district, cultural institutions, the universal free lunch, food pantries to make sure that less New Yorkers go to bed hungry at night. Um, I want to particularly thank the speaker for investing. Finally, the Bronx is going to receive the first ever children's museum in Bronx County. And we are the last county in the city to get it. And it is rightfully deserved for so many children in the Bronx and beyond. Um, and just on a personal note, I want to thank the speaker and Julissa and Latanya. And I also want to recognize uh, my former budget director that's now joined the finance division, Caitlin O'Hagan. Congratulations on completing your first budget. I want to thank my new budget director for her completion of the first budget, Wendy Gallegos. And I also want to recognize my senior financial analyst for helping me through the budget this year, Steve Reister. Thank you, Regina. Thank you, Isha Wright. Thank you to everyone on the finance division. Thank you, Ramon, and everyone for really uh, making it a lot easier as council members. I thank you all. Looking forward to our continued work. And God bless you all. And I proudly vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Greenfield. Thank you. May I explain my vote? Yes. Thank you very much, public advocate. I, uh, too, want to thank and congratulate and recognize the hard work and the leadership of Jalissa Ferraris Copeland. Uh, she is uh, fortunate. I've had the good fortune of meeting her husband and her wonderful child, and she has an amazing family, and I salute her for putting family first, and I can assure everyone that uh, that is something 
that is happening, and she worked literally around the clock for years to make sure that we would have the best possible budget in New York, and I'm proud of the work that you've done, and I'm proud of you, and congratulations. I want to thank the speaker as well. I know how much time and effort goes into this. I know it's not easy balancing all of the interests, and you've done it again, and we're appreciative and we're grateful. I want to thank LaTanya for her leadership. Uh, she doesn't get paid overtime, which is something we should work on, Speaker. But her and the staff, they deserve it. The finance staff is extraordinary, and I'm very grateful for all their work. And you know, the saying goes, behind three great women is a pretty good guy, Ramon Martinez. And I want to uh, thank him for his work. Pretty good guy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copyright that term. I want to thank him for his work in keeping the trains running on time. I do want to disclose that I own a car, so I drive on the streets that I expect to be repaved. My children and I, we go to the libraries, and we plan on taking out more books and newer buildings. And occasionally, my wife and I, we decide to visit some of the great cultural institutions that are going to be improved in this town. And so I directly benefit from all of those as a resident and taxpayer of the city of New York. That being said, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Gordenchik. Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, first, let me disclose that um, Tom K. Shabbos of Queens is funding this budget. My wife, son, and I uh, have served as volunteers there. The Samuel Field Y is also funded. Great place in Eastern Queens. The speaker's been there. My mother-in-law takes yoga classes there. Uh, that would, <laughs> and I am a card-carrying member of the Queensboro Public Library. I really want to say uh, to every single one of my colleagues, those who are here today and those who have already left for other places, uh, a heartfelt thank you on behalf of all the citizens of the City of New York. When I got here 18 months ago, I never expected, uh, having won a six-way primary and a tough general, that I would become one of the leading spokespersons for feeding people in the city. But that's the way life works. And so I want to thank the speaker, especially Steve Levin, the chair of general welfare. Uh, in this budget that we're passing today, there's $18.2 million for emergency food. That's the backstop, the last defense for many of New York, many New Yorkers, over a million of whom uh, rely on food pantries every year. That's 165% of where we were. Uh, just two short years ago. I want to thank my budget director, Deva Wasti, the rest of my staff uh, for helping with that, and especially Rachel Sabella from uh, the Food Bank for New York City. I also want to thank uh, my long-term friend, Julissa Ferraris, for shepherding this budget through. We are going to miss you, and uh, Baltimore, Baltimore, right? Baltimore, North Baltimore, I want to make sure I got it right. North Baltimore's uh, gain uh, is uh, Corona's loss. So thank you, God bless you all, and with that, I vote aye on all. Johnson. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, Madam Public Advocate, a, a budget is a, really a glimpse into the soul of the people creating it. In contrast to the abstract and, abstract and fleeting ideas of a speech, a budget uses stark numbers to reveal true priorities. The permanence of ink holds the writer responsible for what's inside, making them answer for each and every piece. We saw these harsh truths revealed in the recently proposed budget down in Washington coming out of Congress. In spite of this, of this constant rhetoric about putting Americans first, what's happening in Washington is trying to, uh, trying to gut essential programs that keep people alive. Compare that budget to the one we are passing today, expertly negotiated by Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito and Finance Chair Jalissa Ferreris Copeland. Our budget reflects New York's belief that it is our duty to identify the most vulnerable and do everything in our power to help them. We know there are children living on the street, so we put $12.7 million for programs to assist runaway and homeless youth. Well, we're nearing our goal of ending the HIV and AIDS epidemic in New York by 2020, we know that more needs to be done, so we added $6.3 million to achieve every prevention and education in underserved communities of color and senior populations. And finally, despite the recent gains of the LGBT community, we continue to suffer discrimination and violence, especially our city's transgender population. So we are focusing on education regarding the community's needs and history. We're funding the Department of Education 
programs to support LGBT students and introduce LGBT history in our school's curriculum, Department of Youth and Community Development programs to house and feed LGBT homeless and runaway youth, and the Department of Aging programs to care for LGBT seniors. This budget represents my values, those in this council and this city, and I'm proud to support it and all the New Yorkers it will help. I want to thank my colleagues for their advocacy on behalf of their constituencies, especially Councilmember Margaret Chin, my Manhattan delegation uh, co-chair. I want to thank again the speaker for this final budget. She has been remarkable. Your experience and leadership over these past four years has produced budgets that will serve as your legacy, a progressive legacy that has helped more people than you know. This is a people's budget, a budget for the vulnerable, the forgotten, and those left behind. Washington should take note of what that looks like. Thank you. With that, I have no disclosures. I vote aye, and I was very happy to see Councilwoman Ferris Copeland's father dancing in the Queen's Pride Parade. Thank you, he was very, very happy. Thank Thanks. you, Council Member. Thank you. Next. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote. Yes. Proud to be voting on a budget with $12.5 million for universal school lunch for elementary schools. Uh, which leaves high schools next. Uh, I want to uh, thank Julissa for her leadership. It's been a pleasure to work with you. We've saved the city hundreds of millions, if not billions, that we've been able to spend in great places. In the budget we're adopting, I'm associated with Asphalt Green, where I swim and exercise, progressive technology project whose free and open source software I use, modify, and redistribute. Friends of the East River Esplanade, where I'm an ex-officio board member, Sutton Parks Conservancy, which I helped found, and where I serve as an ex-officio board member, Chabad Lubavitch of the Upper East Side, who I join in prayer, Lenox Hill Neighborhood House, where I have lunch with my mother quite frequently and will be lunching with her for her birthday tomorrow, the, public, uh, the New York Classical Theater, uh, which does a free Shakespeare show in my district, which I am proud to attend with my wife, the East 72nd Street Neighborhood Association, which I helped found, the East 86th Street Bid Steering Committee, which receives consulting from the Doe Fund, which I also helped found, uh, and that concludes my disclosures, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Tell your mother happy birthday. Next. Cool. Uh, uh, Madam Public Advocate, may I explain my role? Yes, sir. First, I want to disclose that uh, I have uh, tripartite admiration and respect to our three ladies in the room. Uh, Speaker Mark Riverito, Financier Julissa Ferreras Copeland, and Finance uh, Chief uh, Natonia McKinney. Uh, thank you for the great work for passing this budget in a speedy manner. And I also want to thank uh, Ramon Martinez for his friendship and uh, advice all the time. And also my chief of staff, Elaine Chong, for doing a wonderful job. And I will eye on this budget. Thank you. Thank you. Kozlowitz. Can I be excused to explain my vote? Certainly. I have absolute, absolutely no conflicts of interest. <laughs> <laughs> My sister is gone, my parents are gone, and my children, one lives in Florida and one lives on the island. So I have no conflicts. Uh, I would like to at this time thank the finance staff and Latanya for all the hard work that you have put in and answering all the questions that we have had. Thank you. And to, of course, the speaker, I want to thank you for this wonderful budget. To Jalissa, I wish you the best of luck. We're going to miss you. I really wish you lots of luck. And of course, to Ramon and to Joey Presley for working alongside of me. I thank you very much. And with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote? Yes. I'll just add my voice of thanks and praise to the speaker, to LaTanya. I want to shout out Regina and Nathan for all their help, and Julissa, of course. Uh, the look in people's eyes that said, take me with you, uh, I think speaks to something going on in American democracy, although I'm not sure exactly what. 
Um, my daughter is a student at MS51, and Yay. I'll disclose that the public advocate is her favorite elected official that's and not right. her father. That's right. Um, <laughs> my, that's true, really. Um, it's true. <laughs> there's no doubt. Um, uh, my son is an athlete, umpire, and coach in the 78th Precinct Youth Sports and Prospect Park Baseball Association, and he's grateful to the minority leader for those defibrillators. Um, my wife is the Chief of Staff and General Counsel at Planned Parenthood of New York City and also a board member for, of Women for Afghan Women, which is one of the most remarkable organizations that we are funding in this budget. Uh, here's my Brooklyn Public Library library card. I'm a member of the Prospect Park YMCA, to which I walk. Um, and you gotta disclose. Uh, and though I am not a member of New York Roadrunners, I will be co hosting tomorrow's Run Around City Hall event with Council Member Garrett. What hours do you get there? <laughs> um, uh, three things in this budget that I uh, want to call attention to because I feel really good about them. First, it was a lot of work from this council to make sure that we will get air conditioning in every single New York City public school classroom over the next five years, something we've been trying for for a long time. Uh, there's $2.67 million to strengthen the Law Enforcement Bureau, the New York City Commission on Human Rights. Another shout out to the public advocate for working uh, with my office on that. And the top participatory budget vote-getting item in my district of all time is a two-stall mobile shower unit that the Chip Soup Kitchen is going to have outside of their soup kitchen so that their homeless uh, patrons can take a shower to get clean. And not only did that win, it got the most votes of any project in the history of participatory budgeting in my district. It suggests that when we Put, uh, open up democracy and also ask people to be common stewards that at least sometimes it brings out our best democratic selves uh, and I am really grateful to be part of a body that made that possible. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Kozlowicz. I cannot forget to thank Amanda Menichini for all the hard work she has put into this budget and also and also the delegation budget. Thank you, Amanda, so much. Thank you. Levin. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Um, I am disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that CUNY is funded in this budget that we are adopting, and my wife, Ann Carroll, is a CUNY graduate student, and the public advocate is also her favorite elected official. Yes. Uh, and also- uh, And your uh, baby. <laughs> and my baby. Um, I, want to, uh, I want to acknowledge um, members of the finance staff, Latanya McKinney, the director, Regina Pareda Ryan, uh, Doheny Sampora, uh, Ramon Martinez, obviously, Namira Newshot, James Ryan, Paul Simone, particularly James and Paul, because I tortured them, I think, more than anybody else, uh, Kenny Grace and Nathan Toth. Um, I want to acknowledge uh, my colleague, Barry Grudenchik, uh, for all the work that he did on advancing uh, emergency food here in New York City and for um, leading the charge, taking on this issue, and as a result, increasing the emergency food budget over two budget cycles by 60% here in New York City. That is a, a remarkable um, ach achievement on his part, and I want to acknowledge that. Uh, I want to thank um, the speaker on uh, four amazing budgets that she has led this council through. Um, and in particular, I want to acknowledge uh, my colleague, Julissa Ferreris, our finance chair. Um, you know, when uh, Julissa took over as the finance chair, um, that's an awesome responsibility. Um, taking on uh, the budget of uh, this great city and uh, in a lot of ways the destiny of millions of people, millions of New Yorkers that rely on city services, um, it requires an immense amount of responsibility and seriousness of purpose and dedication, and, uh, and you, you took on that responsibility. You carried um, uh, that weight uh, admirably, um, and uh, this city is grateful. So thank you, Julissa. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Levine. Uh, Madam Public Advocate, permission to briefly ex uh, explain my vote? Yes, sir. Well, I'll be voting aye on all, and I would like to disclose that uh, Columbia Secondary School, otherwise known as MS 362, was funded in the budget. We are adopting, and my child is a student at the school, and while he can't compete with the uh, athletic prowess of the uh, Lander 
and Garodnik Kids. <laughs> he did have a starring role in the school play, so there. Uh, <laughs> And uh, Friends of New York County Courts is funded in the budget we are adopting, and I'm a voluntary council representative with this organization. Someone should tell them I'm not an attorney. Uh, I just want to say that I'm incredibly proud of this budget for the fourth year in a row, and it would not have been possible without the brilliance and tenacity of our council speaker, of our finance chair, of our finance team led by the amazing Latanya McKinney. And I want to acknowledge a few members of her team who are just hugely helpful in this process, including Ken Grace, Chima Obacher, Nathan Toth, and James Reyes. I want to acknowledge the council's Mr. Sunshine, Ramon Martinez, and the council's Mr. Fix-It, Joe Toronto, and of course, my own fabulous budget director, Amy Slattery. Thank you very much. Thank you. Maizel. Yes. We love you. We just love you. <laughs> Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote. Yes. I'll try to be as short as possible. Uh, I, uh, I want to disclose a couple items. I'm disclosing uh, that uh, the New American Leaders Project, an uh, incredible organization that is uh, trying to elect first and second generation immigrants into uh, places like this. Uh, it will be in the budget that we are adopting, and I am associated with this entity. I also want to disclose that Falcon Works Artist Group in Red Hook is funded in this budget that we are adopting, and my domestic partner, Ahmed, is associated with this entity as well. Um, I want to now thank uh, the speaker, Melissa Margarito, Jalissa. Thank you so much for your incredible work uh, in this budget. I learned so much from you. Uh, so much of what we did, Jalissa, uh, was groundbreaking, including working with uh, us to bring the first ever budget hearings for the immigration hearing, uh, or, or for the immigration committee. Uh, the three of us really changed the way we talked about immigrant services. And if we think about what's happening now uh, in our times, we couldn't have done it more. Um, it, could, it can be more important for us. We are a different council because of that conversation. And those conversations are happening even now. Um, and they happen because we have incredible staff, so I want to say thank you to the staff as well. Uh, your work that you do every, every day, not just through the budget process, but all the allocations that happen throughout the year are really a signal to your year-round effort. So thank you for that. Uh, you see, our great city is being tested right now. And all the families who make up New York City uh, and make this city the best city in the world are made up of youth and seniors and people of many faiths and people of many gender expressions and sexual orientations. We are a community of immigrants. And what we do in this budget and what we've done in this budget is protect them in courts. We're making them healthy by giving them access to health care, and we're educating them. I want to give a shout out to all the incredible NICAL partners and, uh, in the room. Uh, $12 million really came back because of them. Every, every borough got love, uh, and you brought the people out. Their voices are being heard today because of this budget. The legal services with, with, uh, with all our legal defense uh, programs uh, is shown here with all the love of all of you here today. And Teacher's Choice is another one that hasn't been mentioned yet, but is an important one that talks about how teacher, teachers have so much uh, to do for our future in teaching our kids, and we're giving them that opportunity to do that. We're bringing new parks. Um, and so let me just finish by saying, when we pass this budget, we're going to stand up and we're going to fight back. We're going to fight back against anyone who says that we cannot, that, that every family deserves representation in courts, that every family deserves education, that every family deserves health care. And we will fight anyone that says otherwise. Thank you. Miller. Uh, permission to explain, please? Yes. I just want to say that um, it's been a long few months working on the uh, executive budget here and that the, the, uh, the challenges that, that have be come before the Finance Committee have been met because of the dynamic leader of our uh, chair, uh, Jalisa Ferreres Copeman, and it's been a pleasure working with her. Uh, I want to thank the speaker as well for her leadership around this budget. Um, I will be abstaining on 1520, 1521, and 1537. I vote aye on all, on all the rest. Thank you. Any disclosures? 
Nope. Thank you. Perkins. Uh, thank you very much. I want to uh, disclose for the record uh, that my wife, uh, Pamela Green Perkins, works uh, for the New York City Board of Elections, and uh, also that I am uh, uh, a member with an organization called the New York Roadrunners. Otherwise, I, buy, I vote I own all. Thank you. 37. So it's three items. Reynoso. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Um, my wife is also a graduate student at CUNY. Um, North Brooklyn really supports these institutions. I'm really proud of that. Um, I want to say thank you again to uh, Speaker Melissa Margarito for the continued work that she's done truly pushing a progressive agenda here in the City Council and to uh, Chair Julissa Ferreira's on her last budget. I remember during the special election when Jimmy Van Bramer and I we're standing on a corner handing out pamphlets. We talked about this. We said she's probably going to be finance chair. We should hand these out quicker. Um, <laughs> but uh, honestly, thank you so much for everything you've done. Truly a sister um, to me. And thank you for supporting uh, communities like mine that continue to need help. So thank you very much. And thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Richards. Thank you. And uh, I want to congratulate the speaker, uh, our finance chair, Jalissa, and all of the finance staff for not only their work, but their sacrifice of time. I, you know, I know it's not easy sacrificing time with our families uh, and friends and trying to have a personal life, but I wanted to thank them all for their commitment, not only to this institution, but uh, to this city as well. And with that being said, I vote aye. Thank you. Councilmember Reynoso, did you vote aye? Aye. Thank you. Rodriguez. Permission to display my vote? Yes. First, I would like to disclose that um, one of my daughters is a participant and at the Association of Dominican Classical Artists. She also is in the swimming team at ASFA Green, both institutions being funded by the council. I want to thank Speaker Melissa Margarito and our great finance chair, Julissa Ferreras Copley, on their last budget. I also want to thank Latania McCain, Ramon Martinez, Joe Toronto, my staff, and the full council finance staff you are the best finance staff that any council can have in the whole nation. Uh, you have been working so hard to be sure that we get the, this budget done so early. There are a number of great items funding this budget and are supporting New Yorkers at all backgrounds. I want to specifically highlight two important projects in my community, including new funding of $5 million to restore the national landmark diamond farmhouse on 204th Street, built in the, 1800, in the 1800s. This treasure is an important symbol for the community and for the whole city of New York. I also want to acknowledge the funding in this budget of $5 million to restore the unloved playground so important for our children in our community. We have great programming in this park, so important related to science and biology. I also want to thank all, my, all of my colleagues for their support of the Fair Fair campaigns and the effort to help lift more New Yorkers out of poverty through mobility. Unfortunately, this did not make it to the final cut, but I want to emphasize that I'm not giving up this fight, and I know our partners in these efforts, Riders Alliance, Community Service Society, and the many other partners stand fully committed as well. It, I want to quiero darle la gracia a la vocera del Consejo Municipal por haber trabajado con nosotros, asegurándose de que este presupuesto no solamente sea número, sino que representa las necesidades de la clase trabajadora y la clase media de esta ciudad. Gracias. Gracias. I vote aye. Thank you. Rosenthal. Thank you. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Um, I vote aye on all, and I just want to thank the speaker and chair, uh, finance chair, Jalissa Copeland Copeland Ferraris. Ferraris Copeland. Thank you. Um, we were going to do Rosarino. I, I can't quite the combine. But anyway, I want to thank them for setting the bar so high. Over the past four years, you've passed a progressive budget, um, one that is fair. One is one that is democratic, um, and that means so much to me and, and of course, the people of New York City. 
Um, I want to thank the staff for being so patient, um, really over the last four years, for my many changes, including, I think, at 10 o'clock last night, so thank you for that. Um, and I want to thank uh, Julissa, really, and my colleagues for pushing so hard so that we could achieve an agreement with the administration to right-size so many social service contracts. This funding will stabilize the social service programs that serve our grandparents and grandchildren and children and those with disabilities. Um, particularly over the last year, although it didn't have the sex appeal of many of the items that we have funded, um, you guys stood up for funding indirect costs, OTPS, and salary parity, uh, which is absolutely critical to 1.5 million New Yorkers and nearly 100,000 workers, 80% uh, of whom are women and people of color. Uh, the fight was worth it. I so, so appreciate uh, the effort that everyone put into it. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Torres. Uh, permission to briefly explain my vote? Yes. First, I am so grateful to be part of a city council led by wise Latinas. So thank you for protecting this institution from the outsized egos of this body mm -hmm. and the men. I'm kidding. And I'm just proud of a budget that has delivered um, historic investments in NYCHA, uh, $1.3 billion in roofs and, three, and over $300 million in facades. Uh, I, I suspect that's the largest investment of city capital dollars probably in the history of the New York City Housing Authority. Uh, and so that alone makes this budget historic. Proud of the new investments that we're making in the area of education, whether it's the po positive learning, collaboratives, teacher's choice, community learning schools, uh, senior services. Uh, th there's more than I could possibly mention, so I, could, I'm, I proudly vote aye. Thank you. Any disclosures? Uh, no disclosures. I have no assets, no friends. So. <laughs> Councilmember Rosenthal, did you, did you have any disclosures? None, okay, but thank you. he's thank you. not telling the truth. He has a lot of friends thank you. and a lot of thank people you. who love him. Thank you. <laughs> Traeger. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Hey, Councilman Torres, I, I'm, your, I'm your friend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I just want to note that this, this year, this time, not one person complained about the length of the Brooklyn delegation budget meetings. <laughs> so a lot of history has been made this year. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I do want to note that, that in this budget, as, as we've heard from my, from my uh, colleagues, uh, victory for seniors, thanks to Councilman Margaret Chin and her leadership, victory for veterans, thanks to Minority Leader Matteo, a victory for the libraries and culture, thanks to Majority Leader Van Bramer. Uh, and the list can go on for our schools, our parks, Council Chair Levine, so many different uh, things. But I, I, I have to note that the Speaker and our Finance Chair and Latanya, our Finance Director, and the entire Finance team, they have significantly raised the bar on what, a, what an inclusive, constructive pros budget process should look like. Every step of the way when we had questions, they came back with answers. We had more questions, they had more answers. I wish that that is the direction that this council heads even in years future. You have set the bar, Speaker, and uh, I also want to note that in this budget, um, we have funding in place thanks to the Speaker, and I really want to publicly thank her on this. There's funding in place for additional translators uh, for uh, poll sites, election sites, including for Russian-speaking New Yorkers. That is the first time in history that is happening, uh, where thousands of people have been turned away because they were not sure if they were in the right place. So I am so proud to be a part of this council uh, with leadership that gets it and that has been very supportive uh, and very responsive to the needs of all New Yorkers. And I proudly vote aye on all. Thank you. Valone. Madam Advocate, moment to explain my vote? Yes. 
I just want to congratulate our speaker and our finance chair, Jalissa Ferreras. Clearly, your mark will be felt for a long time. You've put your heart and soul in this budget in these last four years, and we all thank you for that. Um, I know our delegation chair, Karen Kozlowitz, just left, but she was a strong advocate for Queens this year, and I thank her for that. Uh, and Margaret Chin, our aging chair, I always am proud to stand with you as we fight for our seniors year after year. But this year, all of our screaming and yelling, saying senior, senior, seniors finally worked. Uh, there are many happy seniors today, and I, think, I thank every one of our colleagues for standing with us for that success. Um, I would like to disclose on the record that uh, Alley Pond Environmental Center is funded in the budget, and my child is a proud volunteer there with APEC. On a side note, also want to thank the speaker and the delegation for finally bringing the dream of a new APEC Center to reality as it was funded this year, uh, and there are many happy uh, APEC family and friends in Queens for that. Also, St. Andrew Avellino is my parish, and the Athletic Association is funded in the budget. I'm a proud soccer coach of my son's playoff-bound soccer team. Even though he broke his arm, he's still fighting the battle. Also, for Sports Arts School Foundation and the LGBT Health and Human Services, New York Junior Tennis League and Citizens of Schools are also funded in the budget, of which my father and brother are associated with these entities. Lastly, I vote aye on all, except Preconsidered resolutions 1520, 1521, 1537, M519, and SLR2, I abstain. Thank you, Madam Advocate. Thank you. Williams. May I be exclusive to my vote? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, as budgets go, this one's pretty dope. Uh, we should all be uh, excited about what we're doing here today. Uh, I know I am, uh, whether it's the uh, veterans relief that we're giving to veteran homeowners, uh, housing preservation and legal services that we're uh, putting more money in, the crisis manager system, uh, which has really, I believe, uh, helped dramatically uh, reduce shootings uh, in this uh, city, uh, although they don't get the recognition they so often deserve. Uh, and of course, uh, the youth jobs, uh, whether it's summer youth or work, learn, and grow, I think we've done a fantastic job uh, in really showing that this was a priority. We've increased sev to 70,000 summer youth employment slots, so baseline up from 60,000 last year. I want to thank the Black Latino Asian Caucus, the Progressive Caucus, uh, the Brooklyn delegation, and uh, all of the council members for helping to advocate uh, for this. Uh, we do definitely need to continue. 70,000, although I know I was a pain in the butt on it and pushing for more, I do know that 70,000 was the cap that actually the system could uh, sustain this year. Uh, but hopefully we work and make sure that structure uh, is built out so that every young person uh, that applies for one can have one because we know that this is a job is the number one thing that all the statistics show is uh, can prevent crime, particularly violent crime. Uh, this is a budget that all New Yorkers can be proud of. I look forward to sharing more details about this year's budget with my constituents in particular who I think will be excited once the council passes its adoption. I do want to thank uh, our fearless women, uh, the speaker, Jalissa Ferris Copeland, the finance chair, Latana McKinney, and her whole team. I don't want to mention names because you forget someone. But uh, this is New York City, and I think it bodes well that we had a team of women leading us, uh, probably to the best budget. That, I know the best budget I've seen since I've been here, and maybe the best budget um, altogether. And to uh, Council Member Ferris Copeland, who has been a very good friend of me uh, since I've been here. Uh, you are going to be severely missed. Uh, you've been a dear friend. I thank you very much, and I wish you and your family a lot of uh, luck. I want to just say how proud I am of that decision you've made. So many people think about that and do not have the bravery to step out and do it. And so, again, even as you're leaving, you're providing leadership. So you should be very, very proud of yourself. Uh, I do want to disclose on the record that Millennium Development Senior Center is funded in the budget, and one of their, well, I will say their best, one of their best members is my mom, Patricia Williams, who is associated uh, with the entity. I said, no, I change it. I said the best. Uh, I do want to shout out uh, Farrah Lewis, uh, my deputy chief of staff and budget, who stepped in when Nick Smith was stolen from me. Uh, she stepped in <laughs> in the middle of the budget, and she did a fantastic job. Thank you very much. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Council Member Combo? Okay. Continuing. Matteo. Madam Public Advocate, may I be excused to explain my vote? Yes, sir. Um, I'll start off with some disclosures. My wife and I keep having children, so we have a lot of 
disclosures. <laughs> uh, my children go to IS51, Susan Wagner, and PS30, and we fund them. Illuminart is in Susan Wagner, where my daughter participates. My daughter participates in the Summer Youth Emplo Pro Employment Program. Uh, my two boys um, participate in UAU, and my brother works at Rumsey, which we are funding again this year. Um, it's no question that um, we don't agree on everything in this budget, but I want to thank my colleagues, uh, the speaker, um, the administration, the mayor, for working with uh, one of my main priorities, and that was uh, making sure the veterans' property tax exemption was included in this budget. Um, it was certainly a bipartisan effort, and while we're not going to vote on the legislation today, um, I am very proud that it is in the budget um, and that we're going to make this a reality. Um, I think we certainly need to do more to alleviate some of the financial burden for more of our families in the city, but um, there's no better way and better place to start with property tax relief for those who served and sacrificed for all of us. So I want to thank this bipartisan effort to make this a reality. Um, to finance staff, for those of us who are on BNT, we see each other a lot every day. I want to thank you. Um, it's seeing your dedication and effort firsthand. Um, it's a pleasure to work with you, so thank you. Um, to the rest of the delegations, I hope you realize and aim to follow the Staten Island delegation and, and your meetings as quick as we do. Um, to Jalissa, as I said in, in finance, um, this council is going to miss you, but uh, uh, as your friend, I'm going to miss you more. You've been an effective council member, but you're an even better person, and I, um, I wish you and your family the best of luck. Um, I also want to thank my staff, my budget director, Angela Hassan, uh, and, and my chief of staff, David Carr, and uh, chief operations in the minority leaders' office, Pete Spencer. And I, um, with that, I'm going to vote no on SLRs 2 and 4, no on preconsidered resos 1520, 1521, 1537, and M519, and I and the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Ben Bramer. Briefly, permission uh, to explain my vote. Yes, uh, having uh, spoken earlier of the speaker and finance chair's uh, roles in this historic year for libraries and culturals, I wanted to uh, obviously thank uh, all of the members of the council who have supported libraries and culture, uh, particularly those uh, in, in BNT and the delegations who have really fought hard uh, to make this day a reality. I also want to thank uh, the staff because the truth is there are a lot of folks uh, in the finance staff who really get the importance of libraries and culturals uh, and who I think really root for us very, very hard every year. Uh, and I want to thank LaTanya and uh, Nathan, uh, Alia Ali, uh, who works on the, on the culturals and libraries, uh, Jimmy Reyes, uh, uh, the cultural affairs staff, I'm into Kilowan and Chloe Rivera, uh, and my staff, my chief of staff, Matt Wallace, and my deputy chief of staff, Andres Vija, who uh, worked really hard on this outcome, and also uh, Ramon, who uh, uh, not everyone knows, but he is a real lover of libraries and a <laughs> voracious, voracious reader. Uh, uh, so I want to. Why is everybody laughing? Thank you. <laughs> Ramon for his closeted love of libraries <laughs> and, <laughs> and with that I'd like to make a disclosure, not of that kind, I already made that uh, years ago, but uh, so I am disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that breaking ground is funded in the budget we are adopting and I'm very proud that my sister uh, Dawn uh, works and helps uh, that agency with its work uh, uh, serving the homeless. And uh, she is, of course, associated with that entity. With that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Speaker Mark Viverito. Aye on all. Thank you. OK. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 49 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstent abstentions, with the exception of Resolution 1520, which was adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, six negative, and one abstention. And Resolution 1521, 
which was adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, six negative, and one abstention, and M519 and Reso 1537, which was adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, six negative, and one abstention, and M499 and Reso 1534 and 1535, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions, and M498 and Reso 1532 and Res. 1533, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention, and SLR2, which was adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, five negative, one abstention, S and SLR4, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, four negative, and zero abstentions. Um, and I'd like to congratulate the mayor, the speaker, and the finance chair, and the entire council for the early completion of the 2018 budget. And I now formally declare I, Letitia James, favorite elected official of so many people, the, oh God. the executive expense revenue contract budget, the executive capital budget, and the community development program budget for fiscal year 2018, all as modified in accordance with the relevant sections of the New York City Charter as hereby adopted on the sixth day of June. At exactly 3.19 p.m. But our work is not over. Please be seated. <laughs> uh, introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to committees as indicated on the agenda. Shh. I know we have general discussion coming up. I'm hoping Shh. my colleagues will uh, refrain. So, <laughs> shh. Let me take this opportunity to invite my colleagues to sign on to 1643, which would require ACS to submit and post on its website data related to child care enrollment and capacity, which would allow ACS to access and track the service gaps that exist in different areas of the city. Um, this bill will ensure that ACS is thinking ahead and planning for a future where every child gets the care they need. General discussion, beginning with Council Member Koo. Thank you, Madam Advocate. I rise today to ask my colleagues to join me in supporting two bills, Intro 1639 and Intro 1640. Intro 1639, use of solar power among residential projects in New York City is on the rise because New Yorkers know that long-term effects of renewable energy is beneficial to our environment and also to their bottom line. Today, we introduce a bill to extend those benefits to our city's 64 business improvement districts. The upfront causes of going solar can be daunting, which is why we are looking to require the city to research what buildings in our business improvement districts would be most appropriate for solar capacity, and then to establish bulk discounts for our BIDs as long as we target those areas with the highest capacity for solar. Mm -hmm. As an industry, solar is growing rapidly, and as a city, we must be sure that this in-demand technology is obtainable by our small businesses. By facilitating both purchasing, customers can be able to obtain better prices for solar installations if they see installation collectively. This is just another way as we, as a city, can continue our push to incentivize a green industry, while at the same time supporting our mom and pop industry. I would like to ask my colleagues to join me in this effort. And I also, also have uh, intro 1640, uh, which is uh, uh, green. Uh, anti trees picks are just another one of those quality of life nuisances that too often get overlooked by city agencies. However, if you take a look, you can I continue for one minute? Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. However, if you take a walk through my district, you will find them impossible uh, to overlook because they are everywhere. What is worse, they have been there for years, taking up space, collecting garbage, and tripping up pedestrians. New York City can do better. Quite simply, anti tree pits should, uh, should either be replaced with another tree or repaved to provide 
more walking space, and you should not take years to do it. It should be a simple matter of making a complaint to 311 and having the city schedule a cure within a reasonable amount of time. What should not happen is year after year of inactivity, allowing trips to become tripping hazards to, pe to pedestrians and tracks for garbage. For this reason, I'm introducing a bill today to require action to be taken by the city to remedy abandoned tree picks within three months of inspection. I ask that my colleagues join me in this effort to keep our sidewalks clean, green, and safe. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member, <laughs> Council Member Williams. Thank you very much. I just want to continue to ask uh, my colleagues in the city of New York to continue praying for Officer Dallas Ferrer, who was critically injured in a hit and run this weekend. Uh, all who know him and speak of him talk about how wonderful uh, a human being he is. Uh, I was there in the morning to show support to the officers and the family, and I was amazed, uh, particularly by his wife and nurse, uh, how stoic and how strong she was uh, during this time, uh, and his uh, cousin who was a sergeant in a, uh, another precinct, the laughter that he provided. Uh, I work very closely with 67 precincts, so this is uh, uh, clo we're hit close to home. Um, and I just want to say, although he is not out of the woods, he is showing some small signs of improvement. So I believe that the prayers are working, and I would ask everyone to please continue to send those prayers up. Uh, lastly, this is Gun Violence Awareness Month. Uh, please continue the work that we're doing to prevent gun violence. Yes, shootings are down. Uh, that means nothing to the victims who are being shot, including the young boy that was shot yesterday on his birthday. Uh, in the past three weeks, I've had three shootings in my district, two homicides. We have a lot of work to go, so please continue the good work. And uh, my prayers for that young man and anyone else who's affected by gun violence. Thank you. We'll keep them both in our prayers. And, and lastly, Councilmember Kalos. Today I'm proud to propose Introduction 1638 with Education Chair Danny Drum on behalf of Eastside Middle School students Neil Sarkar, Chloe uh, Shimiso, and Katarina Kaur, who are part of the Manhattan Leadership Council. The legislation they helped author requires the Department of Education to report on which schools have a gender sexuality alliance clubs whether existing clubs have a budget, what support the school is providing to the GSA, whether parents and teachers are involved, how frequently the GSA has met, and which teachers have received GSA training. A Gender Sexuality Alliance is a student-run club that provides a safe space for LGBTQ students and their allies to meet, have discussions, offer support, and plan events and activities, usually with the aim of raising awareness. According to Advocates for Children of New York, the presence of a GSA in schools decreases anti-LGBTQ bullying and harassment and makes students feel safer and more comfortable. Under the Federal Equal Access Act, students have a right to start such clubs and schools may not prohibit students from starting or attending when provided there are other non-academic clubs at the school. All student clubs must be treated equally with equitable access to school resources. According to the NYPD, hate crimes have been doubling in New York City with anti-transgender incidents cited as a major cause. The rise of hate crimes nationally in the city means it's more important than ever that the city sp supports our LGBTQ youth and the student-run clubs. New York City has always been a leader on LGBTQ issues and that includes supporting our students. We're really grateful and I hope that other middle school students can also introduce legislation like you. Thank you. I apologize, one more council member. Council member Cumbo. Thank you. I rise at this time to express our condolences as Chuck Davis, the legendary founding artistic director of Dance Africa's BAM. We bid him farewell um, last week at BAM Dance Africa. It was a glorious occasion, but also very sad. Uh, Dance Africa is BAM's longest running program, and he was a phenomenal choreographer, dancer, as well as friend, and connected hundreds of thousands of people of the African diaspora back to their roots in Africa. Also want to acknowledge our summer interns, Remy Author, who attends Sarah Lawrence College, Lena Labayan, who attends Sarah Lawrence College, Emily Graham, who attends NYU Wagner Graduate Program, and Grant Robertson, who just graduated Bishop Lachlan High School and will be headed to Howard University in the fall. Yes. And I also want all of you, everyone, to join us and connect this Thursday at noon on the steps of City Hall for the eighth annual New York City Father's Day Pledge. 
I'm also asking all of you uh, members that are part of the Women's Caucus to also be in attendance. We want to have a full breadth of City Council participation. I'm also very proud at this time, as Chair of the Women's Issues Committee, so proud of the work that the women in our City Council have done. Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito, uh, Finance Chair Jalissa Ferreras Copeless, and Latanya McKinney. And for the men in the Council, as I always say, you are so much stronger and you are so much more empowered under the leadership of women. And I hope that you will continue this trend moving forward. Now, I am really pleased because in this budget, downtown Brooklyn, Fort Greene, Clinton Hill, Prospect Heights, Crown Heights, and Bedford-Stuyvesant, the cultural epicenter of the borough of Brooklyn, did extraordinarily well with organizations such as the Brooklyn Museum, the Brooklyn Botanic Garden, the Jewish Children's Museum, BAM, Medgar Evers College, Brooklyn Music School, Brooklyn Technical High School, all receiving capital allocations that they should be very pleased with. And I'm proud that we were able to work together to achieve these victories. And doing all of that while eight months pregnant, I am very proud of myself. Thank you so much. And now to close, the speaker, Melissa Macaverito. Again, thank you all. This is, again, a budget we can all be proud of. Uh, really, part the partnership has been unbelievable on all sides. And uh, with that, we are adjourned. Stand Stand in recess.